Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Darren Leonard, and on behalf of the Vocal Associates, I would like to warmly welcome you to our concert this evening. It is our privilege and honor to be presenting to you this evening, The Wind in the Willows, a magical and humorous tale of the life of river-dwelling animals, teaching us much of the meaning of true friendship. In order that we can share with you the best possible experience, we would ask and invite you to come as close as you can to the stage so we can join with you in the telling of this story. We hope you enjoy listening to our performance as much as we will enjoy giving it. And it only remains to thank you from all of us at Vocal Associates for supporting us and being with us this evening. Thank you and please enjoy and do come closer. Cleaning, said Mole, flinging down his whitewash brush. Bother and blow, said Mole, and he bolted out of the house without even waiting to put on his coat. Something up above was calling him into the sunlight and away along the meadows and alongside the copses, trotting along the river bank where, all of a sudden, he sat down entranced and bewitched. As he sat on the grass and looked across the river, 
he became aware of a bright little star winking at him from the opposite bank. The star became an eye, and then there was another eye, then a small brown face with whiskers. Hello, Maud. Hello, Rat. I was just going off for a trip down the river. Would you like to come? Well, I'm not sure. Oh, come on, no chap. Just step into the boat. Now we really are afloat Put the picnic hamper under your seat Sit back, relax, there'll be plenty to eat A life on the river Yes, a life on the river Why a life on the river There's a life to set my heart all a quiver with the splashing of the oars and the buzzing of the bees. Now I ask, did you ever see a happier fella than the fella who's afloat in his little wooden boat? Kicking my sandwiches, tippity rabbits, packing with chocks and cranberry jelly, ham and tongue and beef and gooseberry pie. Oh my! Muscle and curse and rush and salad, cranberry cake and chicory donuts, brandy snacks and fudge and bottles of swaps. Oh gosh! Hard boiled eggs, peaches and cream, apricot flan, lemon meringue, venison pasty with walnuts and grapes. Just so my heart's so shiver, it feels a shiver. Now I ask did you ever see two happy out fellas Then ran them all afloat, hey-ho, in that little wooden boat Ooh. And so the two contented animals made their way slowly up the river to Rat's house Rat spent the summer and the autumn showing Mole the sights of the riverbank and introducing him to all his friends, except for one, the rather grumpy Mr. Badger, who lived in the wild wood. Couldn't you invite him to dinner? He wouldn't come. Simply hates society. Well then, why don't we go and call on him? It's a long journey. But perhaps we should pay him a visit, especially as Christmas is coming on. So one cold December day, they set off together through the wild wood, rather thoughtfully. Sing o the wild wood, the green holly, the silent river and barren tree, the humble creatures that no man sees. Sing o the wild No hope of shelter, no rest in sight. Who was the creature that bore Mary? A simple
Come in, come in. I thought you were those confounded few mice carol singing again. Come in, come in and sit by the fire. Oh, confound you, wretch a few mice. I suppose you better come in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. You may later sing one verse or some resoothing carol. For the moment, be silent while I talk with Mr. Rat and Mr. Mole. Now tell me, dear Rat, what is the news of the outside world? And in particular, what of our good friend Todd? There's nothing new about the Toad except his latest crazes. A lack a prey to foolish crazes. There is no end to what you find. His stamina amazes. Amazes. I blame his parents, such well-intentioned folk, that they're not lost to sport him. I fear they must have sport him. Be silent. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a terrible, terrible problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. What a terrible, terrible problem. We we'll have, have to, to do something about Mr. Toad. Toad. His conduct is truly appalling. His foolish and fickle and easily dead. Conceited and boastful and wicked and bad. He goes in a bad and soon he'll be dead. What can we do to prevent him from falling? Last month he bought a gypsy caravan in bright canary yellow. Oh no, not bright canary yellow. The colour's surely bad enough, but worse was still to follow. Alack. I think that Oxford did for him. Too true. Indeed. For those aesthetic parties. I disapprove of parties. Hold your tongue. It's a problem, it's a problem, it's a terrible, terrible problem. It's a problem, it's a problem, what's a terrible, terrible problem? We have to do something about Mr. Toad, his conduct is truly appalling. He's foolish and fickle and easily led, conceited and boastful and wicked and bad. He goes to the bad and is me dead. What can we do to prevent him from falling? This month, I think you must have heard It's motor cars and speeding At more than 20 miles an hour <gasps> It's a reckless folly as he drives To tragedies leading How true The countryside is now no longer safe His motoring's a menace We have to do something about Mr. Toad. His conduct is truly appalling. His foolish and fickle and easily dead. Conceited and boastful and wicked and bad. He goes to the bad and is in the middle. What shall we do? 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 
What shall we do? We'll sort him out, we'll put him straight, we'll send him straight, we'll lecture him, we'll get him on the rails and bash him up with all the fills. Yes, that's what we do to prevent him from falling. And that's how things were left. Rat and Mole returned home the next day, determined to save Toad from the dreadful consequences of his new motor car craze. The rest of the winter passed quietly. But one morning, quite early in the spring, all three animals happened to be standing in a peaceful lane near the riverbank when they heard a most terrible commotion in the distance. Sure enough, it was Toad. He jumped down from his car. I see you chaps. What do you think of her? Straight edge, sleeve valves, of course. Family crest on the side. Does nearly 50 downhill. Toad, you unhappy creature. Me? Unhappy? <laughs> what a lot of rot you do talk, Badger. Why, I'm the happiest creature alive. The open road, the smell of hot oil, if you chaps can't recognize the next thing when you see it, I'm afraid progress won't wait for you. And nor more shall I. Must be off. See you all up at my place sometime. And with that, Toad started up the car again and drove off. But that wasn't the end of it, as I'm afraid we shall see. Never, never in all my time as a magistrate, never in all the long years I've served on this bench, <laughs> never has been seen a creature more abjectly despicable, a toad more steeped in the molasses of criminality, more tarred with the glue of felonious turpitude than the hardened criminal we see melting like a fly-blown marshmallow before our averted eyes. Pull yourself together, prisoner. Be a man and prepare to hear your sentence. <laughs> You shall be taken from this place and be flung into the deepest, darkest, and most vile smelling dungeon that the resources of the county jail can provide. And there you shall languish on the first count, stealing a motor car Ten years! <laughs> On the second count, driving in a most reckless and dangerous manner. Fifteen <laughs> years! On the third count, insulting a policeman. Twenty years! 
and in view of the seriousness of the offenses and the hardened criminality of the felon, I order that these terms of imprisonment be served both consecutively and concurrently. Take him away! Toad, abject and downcast, was led away roughly by two horny-handed jailers and thrown into the nastiest of dungeons with nothing for company save the occasional spider and no solace save that provided by a tin mug of brackish water and the stale crusts thrown to him from time to time. And, oh, I nearly forgot. The rather comely and kind-hearted daughter of one of the jailers. Let us eavesdrop as she attempts to rally the starving and disconsolate felon. Let me tickle your fancy toe, nice bowl of try. Can't you work up an appetite? How about living life? Well, uh... fish is good for the brain, they say, like some bloaters in bright. Some other time. Don't you fancy things salty then? Well, toad in the hole what? tastes simply divine. No. Kenny's is nice, all swimming in grease. Don't you fancy a few? I don't think so. Want to try something new? Oh, okay. Well, there's cold jelly ill with a nice slimy feel. Pigs, trotters, and chips. Taste all juicy and fine. I can just imagine. Wash it down with a glass or two. Oh, yes. Of me homemade crab apple wine. Oh. Sweet bread and kippers with spinach for veg. Takes your appetite over the edge. Stewed mutton and dumplings, then just walk up and help yourself again and again. I bet you I got. You never sampled before. No, thank you. And you can always come back for more and more and more. <laughs> Nothing the daughter's jailer's daughter had to offer seemed to rouse him. But like all great men of history, his single mindedness saw him through. He escaped by exchanging clothes with a humble washerwoman. Let us join him as he makes his way back to Toad Hall, a sadder and a wiser Toad. I'm not sure that's true, actually, but perhaps I'd better let you be the judge. Here he is. Do 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 I've got style, I've got chic, I have got charisma, I've got mystique. All my friends tell me so. And after all, they ought to know Such an air, the bonaire Such sophisticated savoir-faire So dégagé, so elite The people come and cheer me when I walk down the street I'm the toad, I'm the greatest, the greatest. I set the style the Come stay a while and I'll tell you how in the strictest confidence I get called by Scotland Yard They like to bring me in when a case gets too hard 
Einstein took lessons from me. I showed him that MC squared equals E. Mozart and Schubert and Ludwig van B would have had a lot more hits if they had studied with me. Michelangelo Smalling was absolutely appalling. If Tote had done the system ceiling, you would find it more appealing. Tote is the greatest. Genius is really the word. A knighthood should be conferred on Tote. Okay, make it a period show. I hope you got the message loud and clear. If you can't resolve a problem, then just bring it here. Pluck up courage, don't be shy. Galileo made the big time when he gave me a try. When Newton saw that apple drop from the tree, he asked me what it meant, and I said, Science and invention are mostly due to Professor Toad. Toad is the greatest. Sensational, successful, scintillating superstar tall. Unhappy animal, homeless reprobate, dispossessed, dissolute. Steady on, old chap, it's only me, your good friend Toad. Why, hello, rat. Hello, mole. Why don't you all come down to my place for a spot of luncheon? Luckless Toad, you no longer have a place. <gasps> While you were in prison, Toad Hall was invaded by the weasels, the weasels, the ferrets, the ferrets, and the stoats, and the stoats. Oh, horror! Catastrophe appalling! Oh, misery! Oh, injustice! Now I'm ruined! Alack! Now listen to me, Toad, all is not lost, undeserving though you are. I have a plan. We must arm ourselves with knives. With knives. With cudgels. With cudgels. And with pistols of alarming aspect. Gain entry to Toad Hall by a secret tunnel, the presence of which was fortunately made known to me by Toad's august father many long years ago. Uh -huh. Then we advance upon the weasels and the ferrets and the stoles, brandishing our weapons and singing a ferocious and blood curling chorus. A ferocious and blood-curling chorus. That's right, with solos by Todd. The weasels, the ferrets, and the stoats will all flee in abject and mortal terror. Comrades, advance. Let's wallop a weasel, let's strangle a stoat. Let's frazzle a ferret or two, hand them by the throat. Twist their arms and pull their necks until their eyes go pop. Toad's hall is toad's hall, let's go over the top. Tiptoe up the staircase, tiptoe tip. tip. Oh! Potter down to the pantry, pit, pat, pit. Back again to the foot of the stairs. Catch the villains on the west. Listen while they say their prayers. Let's go over the top. Pin them up by the ears, chat, spear them down to the floor. These are burgers and chips, it's a treat that we adore. Shred the stoats in little bits. Let's have the ferret shop. It's weasel wagon good. So let's go over the top. Watch it, there goes a weasel. Quack, quack, smack. 
Oh, oh, strike him, yes, the stoat. Got him, squashed him flat. Swallowed by the door, the door to look more than cool dead. Yes, Todd Holly starts on, and he's taken care of them all. Sounds the wall. Didn't I hear a whistle? He's gone over the top. Every last weasel, Berret and Stoat, fled in panic and disorder. And Toad Hall was once more Toad. Badger lectured Toad sternly, reminding him that his folly and boastfulness had nearly cost him his liberty and his home. And Toad promised to mend his ways. The next night, a celebration banquet was held at Toad Hall, and everyone made merry. It was nearly midnight when Badger rose to his feet, rather unsteadily, and addressed the assembled company. My friends, this is a happy occasion. Yeah. Toad Hall, lately fallen into the evil hands of the weasels. The, weasels. the, ferrets. the ferrets and the stoats has finally been restored to its rightful owner. I give you the toast, heart and home. Heart and home. Now I call upon our good friend, Mr. Toad, to make a brief reply. I could never have come back If it hadn't been for you, my friends A house can seem empty So you wander and you think you know friends There are so many things That I never really saw before but I think that I can see them clearly now. The kettle on the hob, the chestnuts in the fire, the slippers by the rocking chair, and Woodstock drifting through the air. I think that perhaps it's time that perhaps I started perhaps to think about settling down.
Mole caught rat's eye, rat's eye caught badger's eye. Each knew what home meant to the other. Nobody managed to catch Toad's eye, but then Toad's eye was roving and resting lovingly on every detail of his home. Worth a thousand gypsy caravans, worth a million motor cars, thought Toad. Like a show.